Author and poet Gary Soto talked with us at his home in California. Students from all over the country have read his stories, and some of these students recorded questions for Mr. Soto about the broken chain. Why did you decide to write this story, and why did you choose this topic? Well, you know, in Broken Chain, uh, it's a love story. It's a, a coming-of-age story about how a girl, uh, well, actually, is, is a boy longing for, um, you know, his first girlfriend. And that's a universal kind of theme. And, uh, you know, all my work, you know, tends to have, uh, you know, that uh, as a major theme. I mean, love, for instance, or loneliness, or... Uh, a sadness or, or approaching death. I've written stories about that as well. And uh, it's, it's really not uh, an uncommon kind of theme. It is uh, first love. I like how you use two languages instead of just English. But I think with uh, Spanish-speaking people, uh, Mexican-American, other Latinos, uh, sometimes you might intersperse uh, the use of Spanish, uh, you know, in, uh, in talk, you know, in, in uh, in a dialogue between one person and another. But I think those uh, questions about language and identity are really important to, uh, uh, to, to young people. And so they, they count me uh, as a Mexican-American writer. They count me as their, their writer. And that's really uh, very touching, actually. I think Alfonso doesn't believe in himself and has poor self-esteem. You know, I don't think characters and stories necessarily have to believe in themselves. Uh, I think one of the uh, uh, impacts of literature is that there's often self-doubt. You know, otherwise you have a, a world that's sugar-coated and everybody believes in, in himself or herself. And, uh, and I think uh, a lot of people do at that age of 10, 11, 12, 13 years old have self-doubts about their looks, about their social status, about things at school, um, their neighborhood. And so this is, in fact, uh, you know, a story about self-doubt. And if you thought you were, you know, Mr. Romantic and you were going to go and conquer the world, then uh, uh, you may be deluding yourself. I think it's, I think it's best for young people to, to doubt those experiences of first love, because that, that makes your, your throat uh, clot up. Is Raul greedy or just overprotective? I don't think uh, uh, Raul is probably, you know, he wants to lend his bike at a certain price to uh, his friend. And I think it's just one way of, of trying to make some money uh, in a neighborhood where there's really no way to make any money. And uh, so it's sort of a trade-off. I, I, I will lend you my bike if you, you, know, you pay me a little something. And so it's not so much greed, it's uh, uh, entrepreneurial spirit, I think. Why didn't he keep saving his money from lawn mowing? and save for braces? Uh, you know, as a boy, you know, I, uh, I had some odd jobs. I used to do a lot of raking of leaves uh, in Fresno. And, um, you know, I always had this goal of, of uh, you know, buying something really uh, big and grand, like a bicycle or a skateboard, um, a set of clothes that would really make me splashy at, at school. However, every time I got paid, it would, uh, I would keep, I would, I would say to myself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I promise to keep this money. Uh, of course, uh, this was a, a promise that was broken almost daily because I would see a candy bar I wanted. Uh, I would see a, you know, a, a, a glider or a kite or a ball that I wanted, and I would immediately spend that money. And it's no different. Uh, I mean, temptations of the world, are, 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 they're out there, and they can be in the shape of simply a candy bar, and that money you know, disappears very quickly. I like how you described how the chain looked. I, mean, I do like this description. I have to say, as a writer, I do, you know, I do savor that description of the uh, chain itself breaking and sort of almost being snake-like as it hits the cement. Uh, this is simply called description. And uh, I think a writer has to have what they call a strong specification. And s strong specification is where you, you paint a picture that, that might be common, but it's done in such a way that uh, it adds freshness to that, uh, to that moment. Uh, and uh, really, you, in, in fiction writing, you have description, thought, dialogue, exposition, and physical gesture. And one of the th strengths of my writing, if I could praise myself here for a moment, is that uh, I think of the descriptive passages that, uh, that uh, sort of leap on the back of the mind, so they, they, they're almost like movies in themselves.